And now we'll finally talk about the one way you guys know to decrease the length of the carbon chain, and that's going to be with uh, oxidative cleavage here. Uh, specifically, we're going to use ozonolysis. And if you recall, whether you have a carbon-carbon triple bond or a carbon-carbon double bond, you can cleave it right down the middle with ozone. Um, with alkynes, we generally follow that up with water. So, and in this case, you get a one, two, three carbon carboxylic acid on one side. So on the other side, as long as it's not terminal, would also be a carboxylic acid. But if this is a terminal alkyne, it'll just form CO2 instead and just bubbles out of the solution and you're done with it. Uh, so if you form a terminal alkyne, you lose one carbon. Uh, if it's internal, obviously you'd get two different carbon chains, potentially as both carboxylic acids uh, to worry about. Uh, if you start with the alkene instead, again, ozone will generally follow this up with either peroxide, which is generally oxidizing conditions and you'll get this carboxylic acid, or you could do it under reducing conditions with either dimethyl sulfide or zinc and water, uh, and get an aldehyde instead. But the key is, on one side we've got a three carbon chain, and so you end up with a three carbon carboxylic acid, or under reducing conditions, a three carbon aldehyde, and then also, same thing on the other side, we'll end up with CO2 uh, being given off as well for that terminal carbon. So in this case, we started off with a four carbon chain in either case, and we ended up with only three in our carboxylic acid, with the other one being given off as CO2. And again, this is the only way you know of actually decreasing the length of the carbon skeleton up till now. And the last way I want to look at infecting the length, or at least affecting the carbon skeleton, is opening up a ring. And this is still accomplished through oxidative cleavage here. Uh, and generally, you're going to have more, more likely to have an alkene than an alkyne in a ring. You'd have to have a much larger ring to fit an alkyne in there with the, the bond angles being 180. Uh, but in principle, it would work just analogously. But we'll focus on the alkene here. And with the alkene here, again, we can do this under oxidizing conditions or under reducing conditions. DMS here stands for uh, dimethyl sulfide. Uh, and in this case, uh, if we cleave that bond in half, we get a carbonyl on either side. On this side, we get a ketone. So, and on the other side, with it having a hydrogen, will be an aldehyde under reducing conditions, or it will be a carboxylic acid under oxidizing conditions. And whether you want to write this, you know, in the straight chain forms here, or kind of curled around, which is how I like to do it, um, take your pick. But you do have to understand uh, kind of how this applies to synthesis, but this is the only way you really know how to open up a ring. So if you're doing a synthesis problem and you start with a ring, but you don't end up with a ring, you know somewhere along the way you had a ring that either had an alkene or alkyne in it, more likely alkene, uh, and you did ozonolysis.